You're on mute now, Frank. All right. Thank you, uh, everybody. Appreciate you all for joining us here today uh, for our preseason media day. As you can see, we got head coach Guy Godowski here. Um, if you would please just use the raise hand feature if you do have a question. Um, I will ask you to unmute and then you can ask your question. So if you please just use the raise hand feature um, if you have a question for Guy and we'll get this started. David Eckert. Hey, Guy. How you doing? Good, thank you. How are you? Doing good, thanks. Um, I wanted to ask you, I guess, first off about, about your plans at goalie um, with Peyton gone and, and how you kind of envision that position playing out. Well, it's, it's nothing determined yet, but we certainly are really excited to see what Oscar can do. Um, he's certainly going to be given every opportunity to, to find out what he can do. And Obviously, Liam comes in very highly touted and someone where that in the future for sure is going to be in the same position that Oscar will be in. So we don't have anything predetermined for sure. I think it's going to play out and we're as curious as you. Ben Jones. Hey, guy, how's it going? Good. Yourself? Mm, well, you know, one day at a time. But um, I, you, you talked to pretty much any coach in the routine of a week is really important to them, what they do the day after the game, what they do that next day, how they go about everything. How is that impacted from your standpoint when this schedule is going to play out in a way that's way different than any other year that you've had before? I think we've been practicing right now, meaning that there's a lot of different aspects to our regular schedule, weekly schedule than we've been used to. So we've been in practicing it for the last month or so. Uh, nothing's really been on schedule. And I think from the start of this, we were, we, we made it known that, hey, there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of inconsistencies from what we normally have, and we just have to roll with it. So that's been our attitude since this started, and I think it's going to have to continue. Chris Hess. All right. Just make sure my mic's on okay. I think it is. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Good. How are you? Pretty good. I um, guess my question for you is obviously you lose 10 players and you have a lot of roster turnover this year, very similar to the 16, 17 team. How have those freshmen stepped up since they've gotten on campus, even with limited time? And how has the grad transfer Tim Doherty been doing along with that new recruiting class? Um, it's been different for both of them. And, and the reason is, is that there's been very little social contact uh, with the team. And, and if you talk to all the classes, um, they've, they've said that how important um, interacting with the seniors and, and how the seniors took them under their wing and how the sophomores helped them, et cetera. And, and really, this has been very different. The freshmen, unfortunately, just because of, because of COVID where we're at, is, have had, had very little interaction really with the, with the team that way. So it's been different. Um, uh, it's a different year. Um, and they were on campus and, and didn't get a lot of time to interact. I think Tim Doherty's a little bit different. He's, he's living with a couple of upperclassmen that can show him the ropes a little bit. Um, so I think it's been different for him. But as far as the freshman goes, this is a very different experience for them than any of our other classes. Zach Lambert. Hey, Coach. How are you? Really good. Yourself? Good. Uh, I wanted to ask about Alex. Uh, so how is Alex stepped up as a leader and do you think there's any added pressure for him given that he's a captain this year and that he just got named uh, preseason first team all big 10 limo is exactly the same as he was the first day he stepped on campus here he, he is really the most humble guy uh, and he's always been like that it's just him he's he, he's it hasn't no there's been I think your question was has he been different no but that's why he, he was chosen captain uh, because of how he is. And he's been that way since day one. I mean, we knew five years ago when, when people were talking about him that, uh, and you listen to coaches, they talked about what an unbelievable leader he, he is. It's, it's just the way he is. So no, he hasn't changed one bit. Jake Starr. Hey coach, football is going well. Uh, my question is kind of to add on to that previous one is you look at obviously Limoges, you look at it, the Naples, you look at an Arnie, uh, losing a lot of leaders from last year's team. How do you expect those three and the other older guys to kind of step up as leaders this year and fill the shoes of the guys who left? 
I think they're going to have a much harder job, mostly from what I talked about before, that there's very little action, little socializing from the team uh, away from the rink. So it's it, to get that team bonding and team camaraderie and, and really, m- most importantly, examples to show the way, to show the younger guys how things, how you represent yourself, et cetera is a much more difficult job than it ever has been. So I can't answer that question, honestly. I I think the world of all three of those guys, uh, they were chosen by the team for a reason and the coaching staff agrees with it, but it is going to be different leading this year than it ever has been because of the limited interaction that they have. Dan Kelly. Hey guy, good to see and hear from you again. I um, was just curious. I see the you, you've got the St. Louis pipeline going again with the Christian Berger coming in. Um, how you know how does he compare? How's he looked and how's he compared to his brothers? Yeah, well, we have a couple of them. Uh, Jared Westcott's also uh, a St. Louis guy, but yeah, we've got the Berger pipeline going and, and very similar. They're all just such high quality guys. Um, yeah, they're they, they're cut from a very unique, impressive mold. Mold and and Christian seems like, in all indications, he's very much similar to his brothers. Mark Wogenrich, guy, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much. I wonder if you could describe what a practice looks like right now, as compared to 19, 18, 17, whatever. And then you also mentioned the freshmen, their limited interaction. What are you replacing that with, that freshman to senior interaction with now? Yeah, well, so first of all, the practice is, fortunately, this week, we, we were able to get on as a, as a full team. So the only difference that you see is that the coaches are all wearing masks, the players are all wearing masks, everybody on the bench are wearing masks, and there's no whistles. Uh, they're electronic. Um, so that would be the main difference. And obviously, when you when you bring players over the board, normally everybody crowds around and they can hear you and here they got to stay far apart from each other. So so it's a lot more spread out. Um, and that's how it looks differently. Um, but obviously, a couple uh, weeks ago, it was, you know, small groups. Uh, we still are not in one locker room. So the way you communicate is a lot different. We're doing a lot of this, the, the teams we communicate when we communicate with the group, it's through Zoom. Um, and that's how we have to do things. So when you saw, when you, your second part of the question was, what has it been replaced with? It's, it's really, it's, we, we take what we can get. Um, a lot of it has to do when they're together here at the rink, they're really excited, but it's not the same, but it's, it's what we have. So the Zooms are really uh, what we try, what we use to try get on the same page. Obviously it's not ideal, but it's safe. And that's what we're doing. Ben Jones, um, if there was ever a sport that was ready to have one week before it had to play a regular season, it would it would be college hockey because you guys have never really had that big long run up. Is there an advantage there? And how much does this whole I can't let any of these guys get sick aspect consume your mind more than you know really anything else that actually happens on the ice? Yeah. So the first question that the, the difference is Ben is that in the past a lot of the you know, they, they'd have captain's practices. So they would get a lot of skating and scrimmaging and playing. They really would. It, it wouldn't be official practices, but they would. And, and this year, obviously, we've had zero because they, they, we don't have any extra ice where they can go. They're, they've all been in small groups until just recently. So we haven't had that. So th- that, that's a little different. Um, in the past, you're right, we, we were able to play right away because they had so much time with each other and scrimmaging on their own. This is different. Um, so, so that's a little different. The, the second part of that question is it is consuming it, you know, it's always on the forefront. I got to tell you, I, our staff specifically, Justin Rogers, um, our athletic trainer has been just doing an unbelievable job and, and works so many hours to, to in, just maximize our chances of, of, of staying healthy. And yes, everything, whether it's, whether it's eating, whether it's meeting, whether it's practicing, whether it's training off ice, it's, it's all you have to think in the back of your head. Are we doing all we can to be as safe as possible? Yes, it, it, it does consume us, that's for sure. Steve Samsel. Hey, Guy, how are you? Good, how are you, Steve? Good. Um, what have you done well so far to this point of the preseason and season, you think? And what are you struggling with in this different environment? Um, uh, the second part is easier. I'm struggling with a lot. I think it's a lot new. 
Um, we're trying to just be as, as positive and as fluid as possible, like being able to pivot on a dime because things are going to change. I think I will tell you, I'm not saying I've been very good at it. I can tell you our staff has been excellent. Uh, Justin Rogers, who I mentioned, has been just fantastic. Uh, Alex Dawes, a lot of this falls on him as well as being the operations. Like they've been able to, you know, pivot and change and the guys have been really, really positive. Um, and so I, I can't include myself on that. Uh, I think from the question before, a lot of it is always on the back of your mind and you're always wondering and looking. But I can tell you from a program standpoint, I really am impressed and appreciate with how the, the staff and, and the players have been able to stay positive when everything's so different. Randy Johnson. Yeah, hi, Guy. Uh, the Big Ten race last year, very tight. Uh, your team came out on top. You see it playing out that way this year? Very, very tight race again? I think so. Um, but I think there's obviously another big factor that we haven't had to deal with in the past. I, I, I think there's a possibility, obviously, of, of canceled or postponed games, et cetera. That, so it's, it's hard for me to know exactly or to answer. I, I think if everything was, was constant, yeah, I, I think you're going to see that again. I think you're going to see that year in, year out in the Big Ten. Um, they all have great players. They all have great coaching staffs. Their recruiting is great. Their programs are great you know, man, it's tough. It's really tough. And, and that's, that's a good thing. But yes, I think if everything was constant, I, I see that trend continuing. Greg Cameron. Hi coach. Uh, I'm sure you are, and you and everyone else are very excited to get going here, but is it extra motivating at all to draw Minnesota first, given the way last season ended in the matchup you guys were headed toward in March? Um, we're just really excited to get the season going. Grateful, I guess. Excited and grateful. Uh, a lot of people have done a lot of work and planning and, and operating and uh, a lot of resources on our behalf to give us a chance to play. And, and honestly, right now, we're not looking. I think we're just very grateful to get the opportunity to play. And, 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 and really, it doesn't matter who right now. We're just very grateful that so many people are, are working so hard on our behalf to give us a chance to compete. And that's really what we're thinking about. So, um, you know, first and foremost, there was a question earlier about, is it, is it in the back of your mind? And it is like you, you, it's all, you're always thinking about it in the back of your mind that we're grateful for this opportunity. And, and that's how it is right now. Like, honestly, our, our opponents, I hope that changes. I hope that transitions and as we, as we become more successful throughout the season of staying safe and playing, I'm sure it will switch. But right now, I don't think we're worried or thinking so much about the opponent, but very grateful that we get to play. Zach Lambert. Uh, so the polls came out today, the coaches polls, and you guys were ranked down at seventh. But in the national poll, you guys were ranked ninth nationally. Um, what have you said to the guys about this and like, how do they feel about it? Well, look, I think I think I got a similar question last year when we were picked first. And I think the answer was when we were picked last before we didn't pay much mind. So it's not really fair to now pay much mind when we're picked first. And now we find ourselves on the other end. I think the answer stays the same. Um, the coaches were right about us last year. I hope they're wrong about us this year, but I do think that it speaks to the quality of the league. There was a question before about how you know tight it is um, from top to bottom. And when you have a team, you know, that's picked in the top 10 nationally, but seventh and last in your league. I think it speaks to the quality of the whole league. That's how I feel about it. Acacia Broder. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Good. So I know you were talking earlier about how, um, I guess, different everything is with COVID right now and bonding. What are some ways that you see the team really rising to the occasion and kind of almost breaking those kind of barriers down to get everyone included and kind of have that team bonding? Well, practices have been really high energy because of that. I think because they don't get to spend much time with each other. Um, very, very little. So the, every time that you come to the rink and you get to get on the ice together, they, it's, it's, it's a privilege. Like it really is. And I know in past years, you say it's a privilege to come and compete and practice. And, and this year it's absolutely felt that way every single day. So 
that's I don't I'm not saying that's one of the that that it's a design to do that. It's just really every time the guys get on the ice together, you can you really can see that they're they're excited to see each other. Again, we're in three different locker rooms, so they see each other. They, they come on the ice. That might be the only time they see each other, and that's been really energetic. So really, so far, that's that's what we do, and it's it it's been a an organic thing with the team. But it is fun to watch. Mark Wogenrich. Were you able to get any feedback, response, exit interview, anything from anybody in the NHL on how they handled uh, their season that you can apply to what you're doing now? A little bit tough because they were in a bubble scenario, which was which was um, a little bit different. But but along the same lines, so though, I think one of the reasons that we've been successful so far and our athletic department has been pretty successful is is you know James Franklin has been very open with what works, what doesn't, and has been given all of the programs heads up on, on things that you can expect and things that have worked and things that they were sort of, I don't mean to say this, you know, they were first. So they're doing a lot of, we get to see what they do right. And we get to get to hear, fortunately, Coach Franklin has been very honest with us, which in ways where he feel we can do better than they, they did. And has been really upfront and honest with us, uh, uh, so that has been a, that has been, we've used that experience more than the NHL experience. And I, and it's been very valuable. Ben Jones. It seems like across any sport that's playing right now, the teams that can do the basics really well, have a better chance of winning to what degree do you maybe boil down your identity to maybe more fundamental parts uh, at, at this point, rather than trying to really expand on something? Yes, correct. That's what we're doing. Um, because, uh, and we, as a coaching staff talked earlier in the summer, um, when it looked like we were going to play that that's what we had to do. Like, we're not going to introduce a whole lot of new things, uh, this year, we're going to really get back to the basics and our identity of what we do, because, you know, with the, you, you, again, I mean, you, you're preparing in small groups. Um, we understand we're going to have to continue to prepare often with guys that are going to be out for extended times. Um, so you're going to be playing without certain or playing and practicing without certain players. Um, and the simpler, the better. That's how we feel. David Eckert. Guy, you know, with, with the players who have had left over the off season, what are some of the on ice objectives for you this year? Um, given the level of turnover that you've had, do they change at all? Or are they the same as they always No, are? they're the same. Um, and obviously, you know, it's reflected in the polls that you mentioned that everybody knows we've lost a lot of great players um, and a lot of great leadership. But I think that when, when they do vacate, someone fills that in. And I feel really good about, there's going to be guys that we feel great about that are now going to be given more opportunity than they had in the past. Um, but the but because of that, the objectives stay the same. You're not going to see, as far as our identity or how we play, we're not changing. Um, we feel very good about the guys that were here. And remember, they were able to learn from great examples of the class plus Barrett and, and Holtz that uh, that left before them. So no, we're not changing how we do things. Frank Marzano. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, so obviously, with the um, with the roar zone in Pagula, that's one of the uh, rowdiest atmospheres in the college hockey. Um, how do you? Th how different do you think it's going to be playing at home without that crowd? And do you? Um, where do you think your players are going to find energy instead of uh, finding it from the crowd um, in big games like that? That's a really good question. Like I don't have an answer because uh, uh, I don't know how it's going to be without them. They've been a real big part of all of our success. And when I talked about it being a privilege to be able to play in practice, boy, what a privilege to play in front of the Roar Zone and, and the atmosphere that we have at Pagula Ice Arena. I mean, it's unbelievable. I don't think anybody ever took it for granted because it, it really is so special. But I got to admit, I mean, they've been a real huge part of the success that we had last year and every year before that. So when you asked me, how's it going to be? I don't know. I don't know. And, and, you know, the thing about them is they were pretty educated too. Like they knew when we needed a pump and, and, and often the way the roar zone interacted and, and developed the atmosphere was, was more than any coaching speech we could ever make. So when you, again, how are we going to, where are we going to find it without them? Um, it's going to be, it's going to be an education. I'll just say that. 
Dan Kelly. Guy, just to further on that point, do you feel it'd be easier for for these guys to adjust than the NHL players that had to adjust mentally to playing without fans? Because one, they haven't spent you know ten years of their pro career playing in front of twenty thousand people. Although there are great atmospheres in college, and, and the other reason I thought is because really college hockey seems to be the only league where you guys actually practice more than you play games. So there's a lot of competition with, in silent arenas. Do you think that would be an easier adjustment for the college kids? Well, I, I can only speak for us. I, I think that it, it, it's not going to be an easy adjustment for us because of how our atmosphere is every game since, since the Pagula Ice Arena has opened. I mean, man, the atmosphere has been unbelievable and, and very tangible in terms of, you know, what has gotten us momentum and what has spurred us on. I mean, they've been really, they've been a, a real tangible part of all the success we had. So I, I don't, I can't speak for college hockey in general, but I can tell you from, for Penn Staters, um, playing a game that's not in front of an absolute great atmosphere is going to be new for us. Greg Cameron. Coach, personal one for you here. What is one skill or hobby you picked up or maybe dusted off during the extended offseason? Juggling. Can you show us? You got any on you? <laughs> I would love to show you, but no, I don't have anything here with me. Ah. Fred? Hey, Gads. Hey, Fred. Hey, so um, question, how are you able to hire uh, Elliot Friedman's brother as your new SID? <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> you don't know who that is? I don't. Hey, he's, a, he's the Hockey Night in Canada intermission guy. He was, oh, okay. He had, he had the long beard. But, uh, guy, as I look and uh, – you know, seven of your top 10 scores have either uh, graduated or signed. So who are the candidates? I know they have to be responsible defensively to get in the lineup. Who are the candidates to, uh, I guess, create offense and be dangerous offensively while still uh, maintaining that defensive integrity? Yeah, I promise you, Fred, I'm not shirking the question. It, it's wide open because that's what I said is, is, those all the players that you mentioned that left or signed or graduated or signed um we're taking up you, not everybody can play on the power play not everybody can play on you know four on four and uh the thing is i i everybody that we bring to penn state we we believe has offensive capabilities and it's it's going to be wide open i i think there's a lot that i could talk about but i i really i did i'm talking about the entire roster i would that's what we expect. We people that come here, we expect that you want to, you, that you love to score, uh, you want to score, and you can score. And so I think the prospects are wide open. We'll see what happens. I think one difference is that you're probably going to see us tinker with lines more than we have in the past because of the continuity that we had before. With you know, we knew Sasis and Byer were going to play together. We knew folks and Barrett and Limo were going to play together, et cetera. I think there might be a, a little more tinkering, but, but I think the, so the names are going to change, but the, as I said before, the objectives, the way we play are, is going to stay. How, how does the, the transfer from uh, Maine look? I mean, he, he put up some, some really good numbers last year. He sure did. You know what? He's really, he's a really deceptive player. He's deceptive fast. He's deceptive strong. He's deceptive smart. Like he's, He's really a fun player to watch. Uh, he's been really, at least in the drills that we've seen him, like he's fun. He's just, he does different things and he's, he's a lot faster and quicker than he looks. He's a lot stronger than he looks. He's just really, he's a, he's a hockey player. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how he fits with us. Zach Lambert. Um, coach, has the extra year of eligibility come into play at all for you guys? And if so, how? It has not. Um, so no, not not yet. Ben Jones, uh, sort of a related two parter, unrelated two parter. Where is Arnie in terms of trusting his body right now, he, coming back from that injury? Because it seemed like he was in a constant state of feeling more and more comfortable. And and Liam, um, what are sort of the conversations that you've had with him 
and, and where does he sort of fit into a, an equation where you may not have that that easier quote unquote night to maybe throw him in and get him in the flames? Okay, sure. Uh, uh, first of all, with Arnie, um, excellent, and he does look different. Um, he looks very comfortable, very calm, the same that we saw as a freshman. Very, very comfortable, very confident, um, uh, very powerful, and and so yes, there's there's a very visible change to the confidence that he has to answer that. Um, the second with Liam is really, as I, I was asked before about what the goaltending has, we, we really, it's not determined who's going to run with anything. Oscar certainly is going to be getting every opportunity, but, but um, we'll see how things go. Um, I, so I, Liam obviously is a, is a great profile. It's someone we're really excited about, whether it's excited to see him this year or years in the future, he's definitely going to get his opportunities. We just don't know when. So he, he's aware of, of the situation, but at this level, I think that's, if you're going to play division one college hockey, you're going to have great competition. I don't, I think it's very rare that you have a situation where you just walk in and he knows that. So I don't think it's a surprise. Fred. Easy question. Is ping pong a social distancing responsible uh... activity? It is not. <laughs> it, ping pong is closed. For uh, we have the, the ping pong area is is closed. It is not a social. It is not a. What, what was the term you used? No. Oh, muted. Social distancing responsible game. It is not. So no, ping pong has been closed. Colin Pyatt. Hey coach, hope you're doing well. Um, I'm wondering if you can take us behind the scenes as to how the conversations progressed in getting the season set and how involved you were in those conversations. I'm sorry, can you say you faded out a little bit? Can you say that again, please? I was wondering if you could take us behind the scenes as to how the conversations in getting the season set progressed and how involved you were in them. Um, I think there was extensive conversations from our administration and, and Alex Dawes, our director of operations. Um, certainly as a league, the head, the, the coaches of the big 10 have met, um, a hundred times more than we normally do. Um, so those conversations with us have been a lot more prevalent, a lot more, uh, consistent and, uh, and, and, a, a, a lot more of a lot, way more quantity. Um, I do feel very uh, grateful that our that our administration as well as Alex Dawes is are, are excellent and um, they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. So certainly we're able to communicate from head coaches to administration. There's communication, but I really feel they're doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And uh, and as I said before, I think part of this plays in not only for the Big Ten but our institution that. We're fortunate in the fact that, you know, we have football that's sort of going through it before us. And I think that really has been really beneficial to be able to learn from them. So as far as to take you behind the scenes, it's just it's a lot of meetings, a lot of Zooms, a lot of talking, a lot of waiting, um, a lot of just being ready to to pivot, to to change your direction with the with the new information that's coming around. So I don't know if that's sort of what you're looking for, but that's how I feel. Time for a few more here for Guy. So we're going to go to Frank. Guy, thanks. Um, <clears throat> given the lack of time together your team has had and the fact that even if you did open on home ice, you wouldn't have your usual home ice crowd advantage, um, how important is it uh, or how good is it for you to, to open on the road this year? And also a, a couple of thoughts, if you would, about the Big Ten schedule with so many midweek games. Uh, first of all, so we're opening on the road, I think, is it going to be welcome for us because mostly because we haven't spent any time together. Um, so it's almost going to be uh, when there was a question previous about what are we doing to to fill that void about not being able to bond? Well, this will be one, area, you know, this will be one way that we will be able to bond. Um, so that that's the part I'm looking for. Um, also, I don't think, yeah, the, the, the crowd is going to play as big a a role obviously at all in any of the buildings. So that's levels things out a little bit. 
Um, but it's really the bonding aspect is of what we as a coaching staff are looking forward to. Um, the second part of that question, I'm sorry, was? Uh, the midweek games in the, in the Big Ten, yeah. and you're gonna, it's like some teams will be playing four games in six days. Yep. Yep. What, what yep. Are well, I like it. I think, and the reason is, is I think it allows us, obviously, the four and six to to cut costs uh, of travel. You can you can travel once and play two series instead of one, so that's a benefit. The other benefit of it is, I think that playing um, midweek games will give us a, a better opportunity for for exposure on TV and the Big Ten Network. So, I, I feel it's a positive. Two final questions for Guy. We got Acacia and then Greg Cameron. Go ahead, Keisha. Well, obviously, your defense looks a little bit different this year with the departure of Cole Holtz, but you've added a lot of um, offensive defensemen. So is your goal for defense this year more along the lines of, you know, what it is last year? Or do you have any new goals, you know, for defense this year? Well, we've always tried to uh, we want to maximize the amount of puck movement we can get from the back. And we we look at obviously Christian Berger, Jimmy Dowd. Um, we feel that they, that's those are part of the, their strengths. So we feel really good about that. Obviously losing not only Cole, but Chris Malari, a captain who's as, as good a shot blocker and defender as you're going to see. James Gobetz is right in that, that mold as well. He's sort of a, a between a Chris Malari and a, and a Cole Holtz. Look, we know we've lost a lot um, in that area, but we feel really comfortable with the defenseman that we brought in specifically, like you said, I think they match their, their pieces of our puzzle. You know, they, they match us really well. Greg Cameron. What was your reaction when you found out uh, you were getting an affiliate member in Arizona State this year? Well, I, I, I was very positive about it because I remember uh, all the teams that were very uh, gracious to us. When we jumped in, we were actually supposed to have a couple of years of an independent and we're only – allowed one year and then jumping in. So we really wanted to play as uh, uh, the best schedule we could to help us prepare. And, and teams were really helpful with us. And I think with Arizona State being in the situation they were, I think this is a real win-win. I think it's great for them. Um, and, and I'm really happy that they will be able to get to play a season. And then for us, obviously, they're a great team. Um, and for us, it gives us another, you know, instead of just beating up on each other, uh, all year it gives us another another option and I think because they've been so successful and, and so good they're an excellent team obviously I think it's it's a win-win all around thanks for your time guy really appreciate it um, we will have Alex Limoges joining us and then followed by Paul de Naples but we will let guy go at this time so thank you very much guy great thank you, you great to see all of you guys again